Hi, I'm Scott Foxwell, head engine builder with Straub Technologies, and we're here today to talk about pushrod length. There's a lot of misinformation in the industry about pushrod length, and I'd like to help clear some of that up for our customers. We will not send customers pushrod lengths in predetermined lengths because we need the customers to measure the pushrods for their own engine, for their own applications, so that we're sure that the rocker geometry is the best it can be and get the best performance out of their custom camshaft from Straub Technologies. One of the biggest misconceptions in the industry about pushrod length is that we use pushrod length to establish proper rocker geometry. Today I'm going to try and clear up the fact that it's just about the opposite. We need to establish proper rocker geometry. Pushrod length will be a result of that. Before we get started, there's a few things that we're going to need to get together. And these are here on the engine. You see I have an, a rocker assembly here. Um, what we'll need, we'll need an adjuster. We'll need a rocker arm. We'll need an adjustable push rod here. I'll leave that in the engine for now. I'd like to help explain just what proper rocker geometry means. When we're looking at a rocker arm, the effective points of the rocker arm are the center line of this center bearing, which we call the trunnion, and the center line of the outer roller tip. What we like is an imaginary line between those two points, which I'm showing you with this ruler, we'd like that imaginary line drawn between those two points to be 90 degrees to the valve at mid-lift. That is proper rocker geometry. From that point, the next bit of information we need to know is the gross lift of the cam. There you look on your cam card and you'll find the gross valve lift listed on the cam card. In this case, it's 711 thousandths of an inch. We need to know half that number because again, we're going to establish our proper rocker geometry 90 degrees to the valve at half lift. So we'll take that 711 thousandths, we divide that by two, we get 355 thousandths. Again, this is an important number to know because that is how we will establish our proper rocker geometry. 90 degrees to the valve, Imaginary line through the center of those two points, that's proper rocker geometry. The next piece of information we're going to need to know is whether you have a 3 8 rocker stud or a 7 16 rocker stud. The reason this is important is we need to know the thread pitch on each one of these and each are different. The thread pitch is what we're going to be using to help adjust the rocker arm to the proper height using the adjuster nut. If you have a 7 16 rocker stud, you're going to have 20 threads per inch, which is 50 thousandths of an inch per turn on those threads. If you have a 3 8 rocker stud, you're going to have 24 threads per inch, which is 42 thousandths of an inch per turn on that rocker stud. This will become important when we start establishing the proper rocker height and, and establishing our geometry. So we've got our basic information here together and we've got all the items that we need. Let's move over to the engine and actually do some measuring and figure out this proper geometry and measure for a push rod length. So here we are ready to go through the process and there's a few things we're going to need here before we can get started. We'll need a rocker arm. You'll see on this rocker arm I've actually drawn a line, our imaginary line that we're going to use through the center line of these two points. Some guys do this. Um, it makes it a lot easier because this gets a little complicated once we get started and you'll see why. We need our adjuster nut. One thing that makes this easier to, to establish this 90 degree relationship is we know the top of the retainer is flat and 90 degrees to the valve stem. So if you have something like a piece of key stock or an Allen wrench that you can lay on top of the retainer and actually use as a reference for the rocker arm for that 90 degree position, it makes it a lot easier. Something else we need obviously is our adjustable push rod and we'll need a little piece of tape because we want to be able to put a mark on top of our adjuster so we can count the number of turns. That'll become obvious here in a few minutes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our rocker arm on the stud. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our adjuster nut and we're going to put the adjuster nut on just a couple of turns, maybe a turn and a half, just enough so it'll stay on there. Take your rocker arm, pull your rocker arm up against the adjuster nut, 
And this is where you want to try and establish your 90 degree relationship. And you can see right now by me laying that piece of key stock on the, on the top of the retainer, that that rocker arm needs to come down just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust this rocker down half a turn or so. And we'll keep checking this. And we'll adjust this down. Now this is a little, can get a little complicated sometimes, but if you just take your time, you can see right there, we're real close to 90 degrees to that valve using that imaginary center line between those two points. That is our 90 degree relationship, and this is a starting point. You'll see the valve roller tip is real close to the edge of the valve. I don't want you to worry about that right now because this is just a starting point. Simply enough, from here, we're gonna lower the rocker arm one half of our lift. We have written down here on our piece of paper, our gross valve lift was 711 thousandths. Half of that is 355 thousandths. That's how much we're gonna lower this rocker arm. The reason we need to know the thread pitch on our rocker stud is we're going to use that thread pitch as a measuring tool to lower the rocker arm. We have a 7 16 20 uh, rocker arm stud on this motor so we know that we have 50 thousandths of an inch per turn. 355 thousandths divided by 50 thousandths is going to be 7.1 turns. What I'll do is I'll take a small piece of tape I'll put it on top of the adjuster and I'll make a mark so we can count the number of turns. Because we have 20 threads per inch and 50 thousandths of an inch per turn on this and we want to lower this 355 thousandths of an inch which is half our lift, that'll be 7.1 turns. From here we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, and we'll call that 0.1 turns. Right now, you've just established your proper push rod length because you've established proper, proper rocker geometry. When we lower this end of the valve, half our lift, we get right back to our 90 degree relationship because we've lowered this end the same amount that we lowered this end. By now, I hope it's becoming clear what we're trying to do here. What we've done is we've started at 90 degrees. We've lowered this end of the rocker arm half of our valve lift. If we open the valve half of our valve lift, 355 thousandths, we are right back to our 90 degree relationship, which is what we're trying to establish is 90 degrees to the valve stem at half our lift. This is what we call proper rocker geometry. Now all you've got to do is put your push rod in there, extend your push rod for the length, measure your push rod, and that'll be good. I'll walk through this one more time with the push rod in place and we can show you how to do that part. Okay, so now that we've got the steps down, let's undo what we've done. This time, we'll install our adjustable push rod and we'll actually take a measurement. Make sure the push rod's adjusted down far enough to where it won't be in the way. And we'll actually start over again. Put this on a couple of threads just so the rocker won't come off. Using our straight edge reference, we'll lower the rocker arm until we have our beginning 90 degree reference. And it looks like that's pretty close. We have our 7.1 turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, 7.1. And now you can let go of the rocker arm, let it relax, extend your adjustable push rod until you take up all the slack. Which is just about there. Okay, now that we've done that, 
We're going to get the rocker arm off, we'll get the push rod out, and we'll measure that for our push rod length. All right, our final step is measuring the push rod so we know which, which lengths to order for your engine. Um, I prefer to use a 12 inch caliper. It gets a little better measurement. They're a little easier to use. You just put the push rod in here and you actually measure. The overall length on this one is gonna be 8.725 inches. You'll see there's a flat on the end of each push rod. Most manufacturers just want a measurement from flat to flat. You may have an adjustable push rod that actually has measurements on it so that you'll know, depending on how many turns you've adjusted the push rod, it will tell you how long it is. That's close enough for measuring push rods. The push rods we're gonna order for most of our customers come in 50 thousandths increments. 50 thousandths of an inch is almost a sixteenth of an inch. So if you really need to, you can pick up a tape measure. We'll leave that up to you. Okay, we've gotten this all buttoned back up together now. We've got our push rod in there that's the right length. I'll use my scale here just for a reference and we can open it approximately 370 thousandths, half the lift, and we can see we've established that 90 degree relationship between the center line of the rocker arm. So we're pretty much done. If you have any questions regarding the video, if there's anything here that you saw that you didn't quite understand, please feel free to give us a call 423-391-7774 or email me, sfoxwell at straubtechnologies.com. We'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Thanks for watching.